Hello vlog, welcome to episode 15 of The Consistent Creator. And in this episode, I want to talk about making more money before managing money. Or just making money before you manage money. Yeah, that's right. Make money before you manage money. Here's the thing. For people that have never really made money, they think managing money is very more important. And like I said, you know, uh, I'm the founder and president of Money Mentality Enterprises, and we, you know, really focus more on how to make more money because we feel like it's a found, fundamental principle to personal finance. But what am I really talking about? I kind of alluded to uh, to another episode where, you know, you see people that really never really made no money, especially in incremental steps, and then all of a sudden when they come into this huge amount of money, you know. They don't know how to handle it. I give you two prime examples. People that are in entertainment and lottery winners, right? So, and this also includes sports entertainment, sports athletes as well. So what So what do you have? Well, everybody knows about a lot of women, so we're talking about the sports entertainment. So, you know, you may be a music artist. You may be a music producer. You may be an actor or actress or whatever the case may be, right? And you may come from a middle class or from even a poor environment. And you've never really been taught about money. You've never really made money or even made large amounts of money. So you really never had your chance to really scale up and to see, okay, cool. Now I'm making $20,000 a year. Now I'm making $40,000 a year. Now I'm making $60,000. Now I'm making $80,000. Now I'm making $100,000. Now I'm making two fifty. dollars now I'm making five hundred thousand. Like you've never really had that scale. You never really had that ascension. You went from you know making probably less than forty thousand dollars a year. You've been struggling, like I said, as an artist, and you've been trying to you know get your shot. You've been spending year after year after year. You know you've been living with others, and they've been gracious, and you've been you know you just basically been in survival mode. And then finally you get your shot. You get that record deal. Or you get that leading role. Or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, here's your opportunity. Here's your big break. This is what you've been working so hard for. This is what you've been waiting for. And you, and now is your time. And you get it. And you come into millions of dollars. But like I said, you've never scaled up. You've never scaled your way up. So you don't even know how to manage money. But also, too... One of the first things that's going to be on your mind is you're going to be thinking about all the stuff that you wanted to buy. You, you feel like you got to catch up because of the last five, six, eight years. You feel like you've been behind the eight ball. So now you're like, okay, now is my time. Now is my time to really, you know, stroke your ego, but also to prove to everybody that, see, I told you the last five, six, eight years, it wasn't for naught. It wasn't a waste of time. So you get it. And it's nice for a couple of while. But then what happened? Because you never really, you know, made money. Now you're having a hard time managing it. And because you seek validation, because you have insecurity, now you become a bank to everybody that you ever knew. And sometimes people that, you know, that you don't even really have good relationships with, you know, old friends, old colleagues, family members that you haven't spoken to in five, ten years, but now all of a sudden they hear you successful, and now they got their hand out, and they want you to help them. And most of us, we feel bad, we're like, hey, you know, I got some new false success, let me help this out, let me be a blessing to this person, let me be generous to this person. And that's one of the fastest ways, you know, you start losing money, and then when your money go, everybody else go. They scatter like roaches. They gone. You can't find them. You wonder like, hey, what happened? When I ain't had no money, you wasn't there. Now that I have money, you're there. Now that I don't have money, that again, you gone again. What happened to that? And it happens all of the time. Like I said, you never manage money. But what do you do? You go out. And you purchase things that you really don't need. You purchase things that you want. But you don't really purchase things that you need. You purchase things that I want a new house. So you go spend $2 million on a new house. 
Oh, I want the new Bentley. So you go spend a quarter of a million dollars on a new Bentley. Or oh, I want to take a trip to France and I want to go for a month. Who knows? Let's say you drop $50,000 to $100,000 on that. Oh, I always wanted to, you know, uh, fly private. Excuse me. I always wanted to fly private. So what happened? So now, now you're paying for flights. You're spending $5 million in flights. And before you know, all of that stuff just keep coming out. But here's the biggest thing that lottery winners and I hate to use entertainers and what they have in common. The biggest mistake they make is they think the world don't run dry. They think they brand and their intrinsic value lasts forever. They think they timeless. They think that no, no matter what, you know who I am? I've been building this brand. This brand is built to last. That it won't get old. That you won't go out of style. That you're going to always be the new flavor of the month. And then what happened? They have a news flash when you stop playing NFL, when you stop playing the NBA, when you stop becoming a hit recorder office, when you stop going on tour, when you stop making blockbuster movies. Now what happened? Those checks ain't coming in, but now you got these expenses that are recurring. They don't care that that's not, you know, that you're not, you know, at the top of your game or you're not high demand for your marketplace. They don't want to hear that. And you're going to have one or two options. You're going to have to continue the suffering or you're going to have to cut the expenses. But most of us won't cut the expenses because it's painful. Now it has become a part of your lifestyle. Not only that, if you got to downsize, you got to make necessary adjustments, what are, the first thing going to be in your mind is what everybody else going to think. That's the wrong question. You shouldn't be thinking about what everybody else is thinking. You should be doing what you feel like you need to do. But that's another reason, like I said, why these athletes and these entertainers, they go broke. Is because they focusing on the wrong thing. They never, they never made money, so they don't know how to manage the money. You know, same thing with the lottery winners. Lottery winners are the same thing. Average person, average Joe, you play the lottery, which, my personal opinion, I think <laughs> the odds of you winning the lottery is astronomical. I don't even play the lottery. I used to sell a lot of tickets. I used to see people come in and spend their hard-earned money. Every day and every week, month after month, year after year, hoping for that chance of winning millions of dollars. And here's the thing. 99.999% of people lose. But it's that opportunity. It's the what if. But even bigger than that, when you do win a lottery, like I said, because you never made money, so you don't know how to know you don't know how to manage money. You don't even have a plan for it. You don't know how you're going to manage this, your newfound fortune. You don't even know how you're going to manage it. All you know is, hey, man, I just won the lottery for $50 million. I just won the lottery for, you know, $100 million, $200 million. And within less than a decade, you're broke. You broke. It's sad. I'd rather just invest my money in myself. I used to shake my head a lot of times when I used to sell those lottery tickets because it was disheartening, especially for the older folks. But I hate to say it too, but playing a lot of it enforces a poverty mindset because you're hoping to get lucky. Instead of investing in yourself and getting a good team around you, just like I talk about episode one, you can go check that out, about how to pursue your dreams and goals. But you just like, I want a handout. You feel like it's easy. You, and you, and that's, here's the thing. A lot of people are low skill, so they have low pay. But they spend their hard-earned money that took them a long time to make. But you finna invest in this unknown thing to try to make you feel like you're going to get this certainty thing. That's what I don't understand. That's what I don't get. But yeah, a lot of rerunners are the same thing. Like I said, within 10 years... Of having that fortune, they broke. I mean, you can look at a lot. I mean, you can go to Google right now and type in, you know, entertainments or wealthy people that went broke. And it's astronomical. I mean, some people went broke because they don't, you know, here in the United States, they don't pay their taxes with the IRS. 
So that's one, one thing. You always want to pay your taxes. You always want to pay the IRS. But like I said, the, but the overall message is they never made money. So they don't know how to manage money. I love what, I forgot why I got this one, but I love what somebody said. You can't manage a dollar. What you telling me? You going to manage $10 million? You think that, oh. And this is the thing. It's all about a matter of principles, habits, and actions. You feel like because it's at a higher scale, then that you're going to be more adequate. Well, if I had more money, I'm, no, it all comes down to mentality. It comes down to the psychology, too. How do you interact with money? What are your viewpoints? What What's important to you? Can you exercise discipline? What about delayed gratification? Well, a lot of times, like I said, and it's true, keeping up with the Joneses. We do stuff to try to please people that don't even really like us at the end of the day. But the overall message one more time is you should want to learn how to make money first before you manage money. Because if you know how to make money, you'll be better at managing. You need that experience. We all need that experience. You know, some of us start sooner than later. But I say start right now. Start today. That's where you should start. You should start today learning how to make money before you manage money. Every Nobody's life ever got worse from making more money. Their life always got worse from not managing more money. You know? My mom, my mom, my mom taught me a very, very valuable lesson. You know, I just tell this one last story you now uh, in this episode. I got my first corporate job at 17. I know I'm, I still look kind of young, so uh, you got to forgive me for that. But yeah, I got my first corporate job at 17. I didn't know no better. I thought my mom was just a walking ATM. She used to always, you know, tell me, no, we can't get that. Yes, we can get that. But I never understood as a kid. Nobody really explained money and finances to me. So I thought everything was, you know. Always, you know, that hey, if you want something, it just magically appear out of the sky. Until I got my first job, got my first well, real bank account, and what happened? I learned the value of a dollar. I had to learn how to manage my paycheck, and that has helped me in my career, and that has helped me with my relationship with money. But I, but I never would have, you know, understood the sacrifices and the things that she had to do as a single parent if I had never, you know, if I had never um, made money. Another big mistake that we make, too, is that, like I said, well, it goes back to what I said before. They think that we would think the well don't run dry because these are the good times. I don't want to go back to the bad times, but these are good times. But the thing about it is you're not managing it so that the good times last. Or even, you know, the middle, uh, the, the, the in-between times last. You, your poor mismanagement is making sure that the bad times come back. But then, like I said, this is something that we don't think about. We just think that, okay, I was struggling when I was making $10,000. Well, even when I was making $40,000, I was having a hard time managing that. So now, if I add a zero to that, I'm making $400,000. If I make another, or I may add another zero, I'm making $40 million. Now it's going to be a whole lot easier. Nope. Because I'll repeat this again. As Tony Robbins said, 80% of success is psychology and 20% is mechanics. Not only that, it comes down to habits. We are creatures of habits. And our habits dictate our actions, and our actions dictate our results. So, I strongly recommend you learn how to make money before you manage money. Because if you don't, there's a high probability that you will mismanage money and you won't know how to make more money, number one. But when then when you mismanage it, 
the money won't last. So you won't have what we talked about earlier, which is financial longevity. The longevity of your finances will be very short. And then mention another episode, you will be a sprinter and not a marathon runner. So um, one last time, please, 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 please learn how to make money and have that experience with making money before you try to manage money. Uh, thank you for watching this episode, episode 15. I look forward to seeing your episode 16. Simmons out.